Hey guys, so I'm working in this Christmas junk journal that I made for myself this year and I'm just putting it together. I'm not actually going to be filling it this year. I'm going to save this for Christmas 2021 and um, I'm going to have a flip through video of this journal soon, but I'm making a shaker from this chipboard frame and I wanted to just do a quick video to show you how I do that. I'm pretty sure I've done a video showing how I make these, but I thought since I was working on this now, I can't remember where any of those videos are. I don't know if it's IGTV or YouTube or even what they were for. Um, <laughs> so I thought I would just do that today just for something different. I haven't done a video in a while. And this chipboard frame, by the way, is from Simple Stories, Simple Vintage North Pole collection. That was their Christmas collection this year. So this came in a pack of chipboard frames. So I'm going to add this to one of my pages as a shaker pocket. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make that. And when I make my shakers, I like to use glitter tool or really any kind of tool, but I've been using this glitter tool to cover my windows instead of using acetate. So that's just how I've always done my shakers. And I just think it adds another pretty layer to it and it has some sparkle because of the glitter and I just like the way it looks better than plastic so this is the way I've always made my shakers and I wanted to share that with you. So this glitter tool is something that I find in the wedding section at craft stores. I think Michael's has it in their wedding section and Hobby Lobby might have it with their ribbon. Same with Joanne, but that's where I got it. I think I got this one at Michael's in their wedding section. So I already started this. So the first thing I do is just use double-sided tape on the back of the frame, whatever kind of frame. I have actually a little frame that I made for this journal too. So I'm going to do this flip through and you'll see that in that journal. But this one, um, I'm using quarter inch wide double sided tape because the frame is wide enough to support that. So I'm going to peel this off and then I'm going to add a layer of tulle on here. And let me open the page and show you how I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to make this into a pocket. I've not actually done this before, so hopefully this is going to turn out. But I am planning to put this frame right here. And I wanted this to have sequins and confetti in it, but I also want to make it a pocket so I could put like a photo in there or a tag. So I'm actually going to attach the frame with double-sided foam tape to give it enough space to make it into a pocket. But I also want to have the shaker element to it. So I'm going to have to make like a sandwich layer of that tool to hold the sequins. So hoping this is going to turn out like I'm envisioning. So we will find out. And I'm working on this tiny little space here. I've got all kinds of stuff on my table. So hopefully I can do this without knocking things off. <laughs> all right. So let me take this tape off and we'll add the first layer of tool to this. This little pack of frames came with all different sizes and configurations. Like some of them were our vertical orientation. Some of them are horizontal. Some of them have two, um, like place for two photos side by side. So I like this collection a lot. All right, so what I'm gonna do is lay the tool on there and then trim it. Um, let's see. It's almost the exact height of the frame. So you just wanna make sure that the tool is, um, you know, completely, the window is completely covered there. And let me trim that off. When you're cutting the tool, the only thing you have to be really careful of is making sure you don't, um, and it's, it's not an issue with this, with some things that I've made, you have to be really careful not to get too close to the edge of your opening with the, with the tool. 
I'm trying to think of when that's happened before. Maybe I was using a journaling card or something. And you just have to be careful because the sequins can kind of peek out through the edge of the tool if you cut it too close to the edge of where it's open, which is not going to be an issue with, with this because I've got this nice quarter inch wide frame. Whoopsie, cut the frame. <laughs> All right, so I would do this a little bit neater if I wasn't on video, but I'm just trying to not make this too, too long. All right, so now that I have my first layer, what I want to do is throw some sequins on here, and then I'm going to put another layer of tulle on top. So let me just add some of these sequins. You're going to see pink sequins in here and some hearts, which I'm going to pull out because this is actually my Valentine sequins because we're in February now, and I'm actually working on Valentine's things, and I am pretty much out of my Christmas sequins. Not that you couldn't have red hearts because, you know, we love Christmas and it's red, so I'm kind of okay with that. There's a little bit of pink in there too, but that's okay. There's some pink in the journal. So I don't want to have too, too many hearts though, so it doesn't look too Valentine. And then I have some little Christmas trees here I'm going to throw in there. <laughs> I do have some Christmas trees left, but that was the only green sequins I had. So I don't even know how this is going to look. I'm just going to throw these in here and kind of hope for the best because I don't want to flip this over. I'm just going to kind of lay these sequins in here. And I think that's probably enough because, like I said, if you want to put something behind this, like a photo, don't want to cover it up too, too much. The one thing with tool is the sequins don't slide around quite as much as if you had a plastic acetate window but that doesn't bother me so much so that's just something to keep in mind if you really want it to like shake a lot plastic is better for that all right so that looks pretty good that's kind of why I place these a little bit because I know once I put the backing on it is pretty much going to be kind of staying the way it is especially on a page unless you like shake the whole book it doesn't move around a whole lot so the next step is to put another layer of double-sided tape down. Now, I'm a little nervous about this because I think I have a hard time getting the double-sided tape off of the tool. I think I remember doing that before. So I'm actually going to see if I can get this off easily. If not, I'm gonna use glue. Oh yeah, it's coming off okay. All right, there we go. So then you're gonna add the double-sided tape again. So you can add another layer of tool to sandwich the sequins in. This tape is really sticky. Okay. And when you have something like this um, cut out here, this little extra space, the sequence technically can go behind that. So if you don't want your sequence to kind of get lost, you would want to put some kind of um, barrier there, which I did not do. Like I would have put tape down on that first and before I attached the tool, but I'm not too worried about that. But if that is something that you wouldn't want to have happen, you wanna make sure you have your tool taped down to the exact shape of where you wanna keep your, your sequence. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's get this last strip off. And then I'm gonna put the next layer of tool on. Um, let's see. Trying to lay this on here so there's no wrinkles in the back here. Okay. So 
So just press that down all around the edges. Make sure that pocket is sealed in really nicely and then you can trim the tool off. Trim all around these edges here. Hopefully this is going to turn out. Sorry if I'm off camera a little bit. I wasn't really watching where I was. Okay, get this edge and this edge here. All right, so let me flip this over here. Yeah, so that is work, working pretty well and it's sliding around pretty well. So sometimes when I make the shakers, it's just, you know, the first layer of tool and then I attach it to a page and the page is the background. But in this case, we've kind of made like a little pillow kind of for the sequence. So I kind of like that actually, I may start doing that. Um, when I make these and then just attach it to a page because this is letting the sequins really slide around better than I've seen them before. So, all right, so now let me grab my book and this is where we're going to add the dimensional um, foam tape to the back so it's raised and forget where I'm at. <laughs> okay, let me make some space here. All right, so this I want to attach just like this. Um, and I'm going to keep the top open so I can have this be a pocket to put things into. So flip that over and grab the foam tape. This is quarter inch wide foam tape that I buy in rolls from Amazon. Get a straight edge here. Okay. Just remembering to keep that top edge open. Are you guys still working on your Christmas journals <laughs> in February? I was just telling someone that it's kind of nice, like working on Valentine's and Christmas because both holidays have so much red. So a lot of the little decorative elements like red doilies, things like that can go for both holidays. So it kind of works out to work on both at the same time, which is really nice. Okay, let me make sure I am. All right, that's the top. All right. <laughs> so once you have that on there, just peel that off. Missed a little bit of paper there. Hmm. There we go. Okay, then we're ready to add this to our page. Let me trim this a little bit. I can still see some tools sticking out there. Okay, that's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna pop this on here using that stapler to hold my paper down, pages down. Um, I kind of like him being right up against the rickrack there. So it's it's all sort of relating to one another, each kind of element on the page. So this isn't just kind of floating out by itself in the center of the page. I'm anchoring it to this decorative element on the side. 
So you want to press that down. And this chipboard is so nice. It's like, it's actually got a little bit of flexibility to it. So you can attach it and it's not real stiff. So the page is going to lay nicely. And then, yeah, that slips in right behind it. And you could add a photo, like I said, to a tag or just by itself and maybe attach like um maybe put a hole in the top of it and attach some string or some ribbon so you can pull it out um i like the idea of maybe adding a photo to the tag because this tag is nice and tall and you could journal on the back of it and decorate the tag also so i hope you guys give one of these a try um let me know if you like shakers if you like adding them to your um it doesn't move quite as much when it has a tag in there and when it's attached to the page, but <laughs> kind of get the idea there. Um, yeah, do you guys like adding shakers and putting them in your journals? Let me know. And let me know if you've ever made one with a tool window and if that's something that you think that you might try versus the more uh, common acetate window. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. And like I said, I'll be back on my YouTube channel later this week, probably Friday or Saturday, with flip throughs of this journal and the sewing pattern Christmas journal that I've made. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'll see you really soon. Bye.